Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is intentional. Maybe they're just saying, you know what? We're playing to our strengths. We're going to go toe to toe, and it doesn't always work, of course, but sometimes it does. Right, let's talk about uh, a football match that did happen on the weekend. It was Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. I put it to you, Jim Campbell. Manchester United are the most entertaining side in England. Oh, without a doubt. And we all must play our part somehow in keeping Eric Ten Hag in the <laughs> job. It is glorious. Who the, Who are they? I have yeah. absolutely no idea. Do it you know is... who's similar? Chelsea are a little bit similar. Definitely. In but it's that not as think, fun. It's not, it's as, not fun. as fun, but come on, they're doing their bit. Because obviously they had that game against Manchester United. And then you think, well, they're playing Burnley at home. That'll be boring. It isn't. No, they're true. Sheffield United away. Well, what's that in it Okay, for let us? me rephrase it. I don't like them as much. <laughs> I'm just saying, Manchester United and Chelsea, huge clubs have won Champions Leagues in, in, in recent memory, far more recent for Chelsea, of course. Da, 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 da. Who else can we rope into this? <laughs> yeah. Can we have Liverpool next season? I'd like to rope oh. the whole <laughs> league into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... It's astonishing. Like the stats have been doing the rounds about, you know, Man United not having a single shot in the first half and Liverpool having 15 or whatever it was. Mm. And for them to be that dominant and then Bruno Fernandes to pull that <laughs> just out of nowhere. Yeah. Like what a, what a hit that is. Yeah. That, mm. that is like... The technique of it was amazing. Is this recency bias or is that genuinely... Should that be up there for goal of the season, given the context of it? Do you know what it reminded me of? It, I, it was, I think it's one of the goals of the season. I don't know. The go- no, not When the keeper me. wasn't in his goal... Yeah, but he's, he's got to bend it around him like it, still. He hits it first time. No, does. Like the vision of it is really good. Great technique. But that whistle, whistle uh, overhead for Brentford the yeah, other day, like great. the height and the way it comes Sure. Down. I mean, there are going to be other contenders, but I think this it's a special goal. It is. Do you know what it reminded me of? One uh, that uh, I think it was Edison Cavani scored against Fulham in a one-all draw. Uh, Old Trafford, that that sort of technique, kind of slicing across, it makes it yeah. Yeah. so it's like beautiful. A golf shot, yeah, it is. Yeah, but that's the mad thing. Man United have, have pulled out two absolutely brilliant goals here, mm. and it it shows you they've got an immense amount of quality within that squad. But everything else about the performance shows you how deeply it's buried in absolute dross. But, but uh, yeah, I f- I found it <laughs> baffling to watch. It is. Yeah, he's right. It is baffling, and it reminded me a bit like. You, you know, like, so let me take you back to about 1995, the first time Please. I ever saw the film Pulp Fiction. Ah. Right? And it, I'm not saying it's the first film to ever do it, but it's the first film that I saw where it wasn't done in a linear fashion. That's right, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> films aren't supposed to be like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One minute this guy's dead, and now all of a sudden he's alive again, and I don't know what's happening. Don't but, say who. But I mean, I won't. Yeah. I won't. I won't. I won't do a spoiler. Do you know, why, a, he a do you know why he did that? We're not getting on to that at the moment. No, neither do I. <laughs> A mere 30 years later, I wouldn't spoil it someone. I think that's fair. Um, not in today's climate. But I still really enjoyed the movie, right? And it's like, this is an interesting, like, unorthodox, like, non-traditional way of making a movie, oh, right? Yeah. May not have played football in kind of a similar way. Yeah. And um, the amount of space that they give players, and I guess we're assuming it's unintentionally yeah. giving them this much space, and yeah. they're, they're being whatever it is, you know, all those little clips of Rashford, like, just trotting around and people yeah. not pressing and playing in a way that, top teams just don't play these days maybe it isn't maybe it is intentional maybe they're just saying you know what we're playing to our strengths we're going to go toe to toe and it doesn't always work of course but sometimes it does and it and it was really odd yesterday because there were Liverpool players as Jonathan Wilson said I think in his column after the game they just didn't seem to know what to do Liverpool they had so much time Mm. so many chances Mm. They were snatching at a lot of them. Yeah. And and the record that Man United have, given the amount of chances they've given away in, say, the last seven games, yeah. well, they've only lost, like, two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or th- three of them, maybe. It'd be like a boxer just standing there going, I'm not going to try and punch you. And the other boxer being a bit spooked by it. It's like that, that do, I, do I then the punch Simpsons, him? What do I do? Yeah. Where Homer Frederick Simpson Tatum. becomes a boxer because yeah. he's got a thick layer of like fat around his brain <laughs> so he can take loads of punishment and yeah. tire out the opponent. It's the same sort of thing. I'm not mm. saying Maynard are good. What I'm saying is... But this isn't rope a dope I don't think. This, this se- is not Muhammad Ali. This seems <laughs> to happen a lot and maybe there's more method to the madness than we think. Now, what that method is, I don't know. I th- I but the reality is... There's no way they're doing this. Last season, Liverpool won at Old Trafford 7-0? Yeah. No, that was at Anfield. Uh, Anfield, sorry, 7-0, yeah. right? So they've they've shown that if they can maximise and capitalise on how shit may not appear to be, they can win well. But last yesterday, in a key game towards going towards winning the title, I mean, the difference between them going top or not going top, they couldn't get it done. And yeah, they should have been it, but, out of sight at half time. Yeah, but this is the thing, though. So so this idea that Manchester United, have had, this is their cunning plan. No, is I, no, no. What I've said, right. what I've said is <laughs> there's probably more method to their madness than they're getting credit for. I don't think they're doing it on purpose. Okay. I just think 
Eric Ten Hag hasn't all of a sudden become the world's <laughs> most incompetent bloke. No, no. But I don't think but that there's method. To, is it as simple though as the, the good bits are deliberate and the bad bits are everything else? Yeah, I think that's probably it. But you, Maybe, did, yeah. you said that they they have quality in that side for crying. I mean, they are six. You know, it's not like they're fighting relegation. So you know, they are. A, a, you know, a, we look at the badge, we look at the history, and think, well, they should be in the top three or four or whatever. Yeah. They're not. They're, but still, they are currently and will probably uh, finish sixth or seventh. You you, you would imagine. Um, although I mean it is getting pretty tight round there, but the but the the point is that Liverpool should have been away, you know, in that in that first half, as you say. I mean, it's the first time in a home game um, since 2015 against Man City that uh, Manchester United didn't attempt a shot on goal. Now I know they had fl- the flash one, you know, across the face, you know, Casemiro it was, but I I I I. I just don't know what to make of it all, but I am really enjoying it. No one it. does. Yeah. And, and you should enjoy it. And I'll tell you why you should enjoy it, because it is a real last bastion at the top of football in this country where no one seems to be able to explain it. And the fact that football now, both on and off the pitch, whether it's a manager on the pitch trying to do the thing he's trying to do with his team, or it's a tactical blog or a writer or a podcast or whatever, trying to explain everything all the time and everything in such minute detail... People can't explain this. No. They can't explain why a team who spent so much money, who have a well-respected manager and so many good players, are playing in a way that is a complete throwback to a to a different generation and going against everything that they're used to seeing. Mm. And they don't want it, people don't want to accept that they're just shit. Or people don't want to accept <laughs> that they've got some kind of weird method because they can't explain it. So it's very, very interesting. We should be applauding of it totally because it's chaotic and it's entertaining and it's out of control mm-hmm. and there's loads of control in football these days which can be by its nature quite boring even Darwin Nunes was a bit like this is all a bit much for me yeah, yeah. You know, he was like, I should be playing for them yeah. too chaotic <laughs> if anything I enjoyed Jurgen Klopp like going pretty much full werewolf yeah uh, <laughs> he he was fuming at that goal absolutely fuming and just so f- pumped with adrenaline uh-huh. at the end of the game he should have been fuming because Liverpool go into the half time break at 1-0 um, ahead and it should have been many, many more. I mean, I'm, all I can say is, sometimes I come in and I go, it should have been about 3 nil. All I'm going to say in this case is, it should have been many, many, many <laughs> more. And you can fill your own number in if you're listening. Yeah. Um, and what he would have said at half-time, almost certainly, is he would have said, carry on doing what you're doing, yeah. and it will come, mm-hmm. and we're by far the better team. Don't muck about, don't do anything stupid. Mm-hmm. And, what, a few minutes after the break, they concede. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. it's it's... it's it's almost surgically designed for Klopp to explode. Yeah. Like, n- n- what would make you more angry than that? Think- and then they go behind yeah, know, to yeah. a worldie. Oh, come oh. on. Yeah. A little Federico Makeda reference. It was yes! Better than, it was better yeah, than Makeda's goal. Like it was a bit like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Makeda, Makeda's was a beauty on the turn, off the post. Do you know what, do that you know, was a better goal. Do you know what I thought when Mane scored that goal? Get him, get him involved. Come on. Yeah, we know yeah. that you thought that. Starting. You've already yeah. said you want him to start. Cockpit of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's qualified. He's not qualified. Doesn't not, matter. I don't, I don't, you like chaos? Yeah, kind of. Not in plane flight. Because <laughs> I just yeah. make it very, very clear. <laughs> I don't want any chaos in my in my flights. Thank you, you very want, much. You want chaos in specific places at specific yeah. times. On Trafford. a Sunday, I want a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. specifically at Old Trafford. Yeah, um, if that if that can be requested. Uh, glorious goal, and it is. It's the dictionary definition of it of or of, of not dictionary definition. It's the, it's the epitome of that phrase. You know, goals change games, and as you say, it's so one sided. And that goal goes in and suddenly it's alive. And it was just like the FA Cup tie, really, in, in part. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was, it was so much. It's just a shame that we're not going to see this fixture, specifically at Old Trafford, again this season. Yeah. Although Klopp, I'm sure, is delighted. Do you think Klopp at one point was no, shouting, no. this is my last chance yeah, at yeah, winning at this that's ground? That's how it felt, wasn't it? Because yeah. it was put to him that both teams um, seem a bit disappointed by it afterwards. And he was <laughs> like, oh, really, man? You're not disappointed. I'm like, interesting. Which is funny. He really wanted to win that game. Mm. He wanted to put a full stop on that. And you understand that. Well, the title race as well in that context. Yeah, well, is that. I mean, it was slightly fortunate that Aaron wan dives in on Har- Harvey Elliott mm. to, to get them the, the equal. Yeah, that, that was. Such that, a shame for Manchester United because yeah. it, it, I know that the, the build-up to that was, let's be frank, a disgrace. The way Casemiro was and Bruno Fernandes, they highlighted it on Manchester Day too. It was just like that, that's, that lack of pressing, that lack of intent. I mean, Casemiro just... I, I, when he went there, you know, obviously slightly older, um, as we all, as that's what age happens to us all. I remember thinking he's going to get tired very, very quickly in that yeah. midfield. And he's not that old, though. Yeah, I know, but it's just yeah, Thiago Silva's watching that game. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> he looks, he looks like yeah. Get he, on the weight. They'll sign Thiago <laughs> Silva in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> he, he looks like he. Uh, I've got to be careful what I say here for lots of different reasons, not least of which, again, he is without Sid and all that. Mm. Um, he does look like he blows up a bit when he's injured. 
He looks mm. like he puts on weight, yeah. and he's and and yeah, it takes him a while to get back up to to pace again. He looks but, pretty lean at the moment, though. He does now, but when he came back from injury a while back, he did look quite as in, in to use a boxing term, he looked quite fleshy, right? Uh, and um, mm. and and you have to remember, like, I, I think, like you know, he, he is of advancing years, but he's also coming from a, a league which is very different to the Premier League, and he should be well settled in by now. But but nevertheless, you're right. What you say o- on the Wambasaka thing. Um, it's always a problem because he Wan is a brilliant as, as people always say, he's a brilliant one on one defender. At his best, which you know, uh, people can decide themselves when that last was, but at his best, he's a very one of the best one on one fullback defenders in the Premier mm. League, right? He's a competent defender. But he likes to go to he likes to go to ground. Mm. And and the issue with that is if you go to ground, you've got to be sure. Look, I thought I thought it was a penalty, but I thought Elliot made sure it was a penalty. Yeah, I think it's I mean. it's never going to be overturned. A lot, of, it's a, a, canny little a lot of people have been saying that it, you know, maybe it wasn't a penalty or maybe it was a bit soft, but I think it's it's Elliot's right leg you have to look at, isn't it? Because he's sort of he's between I, 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 The referee's legs, never going to yeah. uh, overturn that. Let, let, let this be clear. Um but and Elliot, you know, he's he's been a handy substitute when I mean, he's started one or two games, but he's it'd be interesting yeah, he's really to see. Yeah, well. yeah, I mean he's been Playing well for a while. I mean, it's no uh, sort of revelation. Um, good news, though, uh, from what we were talking about earlier, is that Eric Ten Hag has said that he is... Four in, more years? He, well, that's Four what more years. that's what we'll be chanting. Yeah. But he's, he says he's no doubt that he'll be Manchester United manager next season. Come on! I lo- what I like about this is that he has clearly ascertained what we've all known for years, which is that it's absolute chaos at Man United. Mm. No one knows what's happening. So he might as well just t- take just, the ball by the horn. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Last week it was telling people who are literally his bosses to not interrupt this process. <laughs> now he's deciding and briefing publicly yeah. that he's, I'm, I'm staying, don't worry about that. <laughs> but is it that chaotic that the board just go, oh, well, we, how can we get rid of him? He so, sounds yeah. like he's in charge. <laughs> Say what you want, lad. Yeah. Say what you want. Is he my manager? <laughs> I don't know enough to so read his contract. Lads, but I'm doing, I'm, doing yeah. four, I'm doing four press conferences a week. Yeah. You could never keep up with the stuff I would have put out there. <laughs> can you fix the roof and cook the chicken? Because if you are, then you're in. Yeah. Uh, now, in non-related news, uh, Big Sam Allardyce watched the game in the executive box with Sir Jim Ratcliffe and um, Sir Dave uh, 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 Brailsford. Yeah. Let us dream. Mm. Yeah. Do you think Sam's thinking, if I hang around with all these knights of the realm, it'll only be a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> he'll do a Steve Keen. Yeah. He'll, get in the, he'll, he'll poison their ears and get himself installed. I I do, do you know what? Yeah. This, is, this is perhaps the only time I'll ever say this. I wouldn't want him to become Majesty United Manager because this is so good under Ten Hag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's like and to quash the, the theory, it's almost certainly because Sam Allardyce and, and Alex Ferguson are really good friends. Jim, there's, there's no theory. theory. Jim, fuck you now. No, no, but there's look, no theory oh, of Big on. Sam. How dare either of you look at that situation <laughs> and not jump to the funniest <laughs> scenario? How dare both of you? Yeah. You're getting slack. Yeah. All right. I, I just like the idea. You know, I, don't, I know this kind of networking makes the world go round and everything, but like, if Sam Allardyce like, picked up the phone to one of these two, and maybe it was through Sir Alex, but another night of the round, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's hoping that he lies down with dogs and gets some very, very great fleas. Yeah, true. Um, I'd like to apologise to Jim and the Thanks, Ramble mate. listeners. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. I would too. Mm. Um, but wouldn't Sir Jim Ratcliffe just go, why? Just get, I'll get you a ticket. Why are you going to be in the box? Just go and sit down there. Oh, they're all in it together, yeah. aren't they, that lot? Mm. Um, anyway, yes. So um, looking at the bigger picture, if we have to, the draw does leave Liverpool behind Arsenal on goal difference. Just a point above um, Manchester City. And it's all... Ch- I mean, this is such a great title race. It is, isn't it? It's phenomenal. We haven't seen a three-way title race for goodness knows how long. So tight. Yeah, at, at this stage of the season. Um, and it's it's confused um, uh, journalist uh, John Cross, um, who... Um, Easily done. Yeah. And, and, and as, 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 done. To, to quote um, Neil Warnock about John Cross, he loves Arsenal. <laughs> Does our John. Read the quote. It's funny uh, as so John, John Cross said after the game... Um, if a supercomputer keeps changing its percentages on the chances of the three teams winning the title, then it can't be that super after all. Yeah, he's oh. done you there. Yeah, that's some super proper computer. like galaxy brain thinking. Exactly. That. It's yeah. almost as if the supercomputer, which is just a computer now, yeah. uh, is um, it's a get, calculator getting information <laughs> punched into it and then updating its its uh, its result. I love the fact the supercomputer can't update. Who's going to win the title? Chelsea. No, you're five years old. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not. It's not a supercomputer thing because it's updated. I love the. I love the fact that, and this is speaking directly to anyone who's helped to, had to have their parents or their grandparents and help them use Zoom, right? I love the fact that John Cross has thought. 
He's got so enthusiastic about this quote unquote super computer. He's genuinely disappointed that it can't predict the future. Yes, that's right. <laughs> he's like, well, I've watched, I watched that iRobot the other day. Yeah. This is rubbish. He seems real to life. be annoyed that the computer is sort of changing as it goes. It's like, well, the points yeah. tallies are changing now. It's yeah. taking in new information and adjusting mm. its predictions yeah. accordingly. Which, which to be which, fair, which we could all do. <laughs> no, which, to be fair, if you are a sports writer for the mirror, you've never done. <laughs> 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 oh dear, but yeah. they but they're top Arsenal, uh, Liverpool are not, Manchester City are not. Even though they got a big win at Crystal Palace four uh, two, Kevin De Bruyne scored his one hundredth goal for Manchester City. It's another brilliant game in a completely different way. Well, it was, and and it was only four minutes old when uh, Palace opened the scoring. Pep was fuming. He was he um, was ranting and raving at his little sort of. It's like Kevin Keegan lookalike friend um, yeah. on on the on the he's yeah. he's a co- he's a member of the coaching staff. He's like one of the most successful assistant managers in the, in the yeah. history of His the game. Little Kevin Keegan like friend. <laughs> Stick that on your business card. Yeah, that is the unbelievable amount of respect you've given him there. Like he's a little sidekick. Yeah. Well, he is a sidekick. <sighs> Come on, he is, isn't he? He's an assistant coach. Yeah, which is a sidekick. It's sure. like it's it's one man, Neil Lillo, isn't it? Like the one, of the most influential coach oh, ever. Yeah, he's magnificent. Yeah. yeah, you know, but he's no Pep Guardiola. No, <laughs> Robin will never be Batman. Call it, call him what you <laughs> <laughs> call him what you called him. <laughs> I think I've said enough. Yeah, uh, but they was fuming. You know, he was he was chatting away to him. Um, and that goal was that almost thing. my highlight, by the way. When you when you see a ball played in front of Jean Philippe Mateta yes. and he opens his legs and starts oh, galloping down the pitch, what a gallop! It's an it's an extraordinary sight, mm, and that finish off the inside of the post, pinpoint lovely, surgical yeah. accuracy, it's absolutely lovely. I just thought to myself for about a tenth of a second, get in there, <laughs> and I thought it's the fourth minute. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to end only one way. There's loads of minutes left, and yeah, Kevin De Bruyne is too playing. early. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he, he obviously equalised um, fairly soon after with a with a crashing goal. Yeah. Uh, it, it, when that happens again, like you, it's so devastating for a team that just doesn't have that kind of quality because yeah. that kind of quality is in the form of one of the best midfielders possibly we've ever seen mm-hmm. in one our generation. One of the generation. best players we've ever one seen. One of the best players, exactly. You don't have to re- restrict yeah. it to just midfielders. When he pulls that out of the bag, you just go... Yeah, because yeah. that's what you want, right? You want to restrict them to that. Well, and, exactly. And they can still hurt you. Yeah, exactly. That, and, yeah, in a way, yeah, I know what you mean. You've kind of done your job. You've basically said, you need to do something world-class. Oh, you have. And, and yeah, again. Well, we, yeah, we, oh, you've done it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah our, our only cool. hope is we'll restrict you to something world-class, and uh, but your world-class moment hits the crossbar. Mm. That's mm. what you've got to hope. But no, he'll score that, and then he'll yeah. deal well off his left as Indeed. well. But I mean, Palace have had a little bit of joy over the years against Man City, yeah. one of the sides that have, but certainly not um, this time round. Although, you know, getting two goals, I mean, <laughs> as a Palace friend of mine said once when they went to Old Trafford, they lost 5-2. He went, I had a great afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the last, uh, their second was just a constant though, wasn't it, really? it was a bit, yeah, yeah, but it still gets everybody up on their Gills feet. Gills the lily somewhat, though. Somewhat, yeah. you would say. Um, Jack Grealish looked good again. He did. He, he looks really confident I think he'll again, go to the Euros, he? I really do. And, and, and it's good to see because he's had a, an injury-stricken season. Obviously, he took a little while to get going as well. Doc, who came in, and he was a little bit concerned about his, his place, of course. But to see him getting some minutes under his belt, enjoying yeah. his football... The, it's, the, yeah. the place is his to lose, isn't it? And I think he's doing everything to keep it. Indeed. I mean, Anthony Gordon, who perhaps would be... Um, he had a really good game at the weekend. Yeah, well. well, again, yeah. So, so a bit of competition I think, I think, I think you know, if I was going to be totally even-handed about it, I would say that Grealish is probably a better player at this point than Gordon, but Gordon's in much better form. And, and you can talk about Grealish looking better. I thought he looked decent against Aston Villa. Um, he has to keep doing that though from now until the 100%. end. 100%. And let's not forget, you know, I'm just putting this out there. I don't want to offend anyone in the room um, by, by by putting this out there. He's not recorded any kind of goal or assist this year. Yeah, so, well, so I he's, mean, not, he's not producing did he not, numbers. Did he not assist Kevin De Bruyne? I don't think either. it counted as an assist in the end. Is it because it was so spectacular? I might, maybe it did. Maybe it did. I, I don't think it did. It's though. like, the, you know, the, the past to Maradona in the 86 a, quarter final. Yeah. You know? did, did it take a touch off a <laughs> defender might, or something on the way through? Right. Ah, oh, I see. Don't, don't quote me on that. If he has done that, that's the first goal contribution he's made this year. I'm just putting it out there. I'm not I won't quote you. You've said it yourself and we've got it on record. Yeah, so don't I don't need to. I do not need to. To my moment of the weekend, uh, you know, might have been this actually. Um, you said that yourself, Luke, was when uh, Ortega did that sort of drag back yeah. when, when oh Rod- Roddy put him in trouble. It was sensational. Any any old fashioned proper football man over the age of 50 was threw beside up. themselves. Yeah, yeah. Threw, threw up, uh-huh. went straight down the polling booth and voted again <laughs> for Brexit, saying, yeah. Where are we here? <laughs> what, what's happened to this fucking country where in our league, a goalkeeper, was, and they're all a bit crazy, by the way, goalkeepers. Crazy, a bit crazy. They 
they can do that. It's unbelievable. I just love anybody who plays for Pep Guardiola. You've got to be able to, to do Deal these outrageous it. things. It's, it's funny because Rodri, Rodri didn't have a great game in large parts. It's really annoying. It's like, oh, Rodri's finally had a like a, a, a below 10 out of 10 game and they mm. still win. Yeah, I know. And and speaking of um, players who, you know, learned under Guardiola and they can do stuff, I really like Rico Lewis. Oh, he's a brilliant. phenomenal player. And I know a lot of people are saying that as well. Yeah. It's probably perhaps too late for him for the, for the Euros and all that kind of stuff, but just I, such a lovely player with so many tools in his, uh, in his toolbox. I mean, I mean also, you know, Oscar Bob played in as well. He looks like a great player to come yeah. in, you know, with Grealish kind of potentially coming back into form and Rico Lewis getting some more minutes and, you know, it, it does bode well for them for the run in, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it's, we've seen time and time again that he's good at keeping his squad fresh, right? So uh -huh. these players are all coming in and they look like they're just, you know, just, just out of the box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> box fresh. But they are because he's been there for so long that he's, he, what's happened is with Guardiola clearly is that he's essentially done what the old, I mean, they probably still do it, but the old kind of traditional Barcelona mm -hmm. thing where from the very, very start of your career at the academy, you learn to play in a certain mm -hmm. way, which is, makes it all so coherent that when a young player comes it's not it's not just that they produce good players which of course they do but some people will say well Oscar Bob comes and he looks like he's you know to the manner born well of course he is because he's been indoctrinated into that style yeah. of probably Guardiola's probably been at the club longer than he has or I haven't looked at the numbers but it will be similar and ever since he's been there he's been prepared for that yeah. and if he gets through every single academy phase and goes through graduates through the youth ranks and stuff he's going to be it's going to be just all he ever knows and and the, and the apotheosis of that is Phil Foden basically it's, it's not just they're good players. They just they're just designed to play in that way as well. Mm. All bodes well for Manchester City. Mm. Ultimately, though, they upset the Crystal Palace fans and the Crystal Palace Eagle, who of course is the mascot mm. for Crystal Palace, and that seamlessly takes us out <laughs> of the Premier like League. So it, telegraphed as yeah. a link. I saw it coming mm. on a really clear day over the hill. Mm, but you couldn't do anything about I it. I couldn't could stop you? it. I was Iron Robin, and you were a left back. You are inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> um, staying with mascots in, in London, um, did you see that the QPR mascot, Jude the Cat, has been fired because he keeps flirting with female fans on match days? <laughs> with or at? Because they're not the same, are they? Uh, yeah. The quote says, flirting with female fans on match days. Right. Yeah. I'm only reading uh, <laughs> okay, a quote well, that message. has been handed to me. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because um, he's a fictional character on paper, but inside there is a very real man. Well, that is <laughs> that is what Jude you the don't Cat know, handed you don't know me. You don't know what you're flirting with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, a, a, a source at QPR, Jim. Oh, you doing? You all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing you, you, you the go? Do you like cats? I can't take the head off, no. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> uh, everyone at the club loved Jude. Um, he's not died. Uh, he had the smoothest moves in the league, but unfortunately, he was a bit of a smooth talker too. He danced with the devil. Uh, several people complained that he was trying it on with the ladies more than cheering on the lads on the pitch. He would always be dancing with them. With them? Their <laughs> words, not mine. <laughs> Imagine that. You cut to the, the mascot on the bench going, hey, that's it, ladies, here we go, the old two-step. And then trying to get them to give their number. Jude was warned, but he couldn't help himself, and the club had no choice. <laughs> this is all from a, from a source from QPR. How do you yeah. even take their number? Have you got a little fuzzy phone? <laughs> I cut don't. Cut the like, pen. Yeah. You've got a massive paw. <laughs> cut hold the pen. He's got a photographic memory. Yeah. But it's a problem, this, because really, what... People are going to have a potentially a negative experience with the mascot itself. Yes. Mm. So they're going to have to bring presumably another mascot, and you can't just put a different person in the mascot. No. You're going to have to yeah, bring another mascot so in. You update point. it, or you you change it, give it a haircut. Well, well it's like know. it was like very much it. very much like when um, Portsmouth had to change their mascot. Mm. I think I'm right. It's been a long, long time since I, since it was. So I might not quite have the details. So forgive me. But they had to change Nelson the dog to Frogmore the frog. Uh, yeah, because I think that they introduced a female mascot called the Mary Rose oh no. at the start of the season oh no. as um, Nelson the dog's sister. And then at the end of the Nelson season, and... they married them because they forgot. <laughs> and everyone started complaining. A bit like Star Wars. So that's... <laughs> yeah, it was a bit like that. I don't <laughs> think reverse, that's what they were the going reverse. for. Yeah. <laughs> so they changed it. They turned so, one of them into a frog and just hoped no one would notice. I don't think they turned one of them into a frog. They introduced a new mascot. Right. Mm. So anyway. There we are. Uh, before we go for a break, sad news um, that Joe Kinnear has died. The former Wimbledon and Newcastle manager passed away at 77 years of age following a long battle with dementia. Of course, best known for, well, for us, because he was a great player. He played for mm. Spurs, of course, one, mm. one, one trophy. 
trophies uh, with them. But we know him for his seven year spell with with Wimbledon, where uh, he inherited the crazy gang and and that yeah. that great Wimbledon side. Really, you know, he, they finished yeah. regularly in the top ten. Mm. International player as well, played for Republic of Ireland. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I think a big big character in in our sort of footballing youth. Really, yeah, sure. definitely. And uh, Jonathan Wilson's written a, a brilliant article in the Guardian about him, and he does talk about that press conference at Newcastle and all these mm. things and says, you know, this, this was um, unfortunately the, the last thing that you, you, you kind of remembered for often sort of, you know, tr- sort of trumps everything else. Um, but that was, that was kind of a part of but even within character. that though, it was, well, you know, we've laughed a lot about that over the years, but very much sort of, I think on the side of joking here. As ever, people are, people are complicated, aren't they? And mm. I think Jonathan Wilson said in this piece, and he said, that, you know, it's part of his story. That's I mean, right. He did do that. I mean, and we, yeah. we met him very, very briefly, but again, like just being in the room with him and they were, there was a bit of chat and so on, you, mm. you could tell, you know, big character and uh, charismatic as well. Absolutely. Funny guy. Absolutely, yeah. So for condolences to his, to his family and his friends for sure. Absolutely. Uh, coming up in the second half, we've got that crazy match at Aston Villa. Huge win uh, for Luton and oh, an amazing scenes in Seville. See you in a moment. <laughs> Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 Dominic y Calvert Ruin, y es el gol de Leberto. Wow, well, welcome back to the Football <laughs> Ravel, everybody. For those who don't know, that was the the Argentinian commentary, apparently, for the uh, Calvert Lewin goal against Newcastle last week. I thought it was about P- it was Peter Drury in about three weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank friend of the Ramble Joe for sending us that clip. Now then, Aston Villa 3, Brentford 3. Didn't see that coming. I'll be honest with you. When no. I, I, I when I was sort of keeping myself up to date with all the scores and so on, I saw Villa uh, were, were two goals to the good. And I kind of switched off. And then at full time, I went back and I was like, three, three, three. Yeah. Blimey. But it was an amazing turnaround from Brentford. Yeah. And Brentford are such a funny side, aren't they? Because again, like, they're a side who can who can score. They can, they can, they, they, they can go toe to toe against some of the big sides and so on. Yet, yeah, haven't won for ages and are only four points above the relegation zone. I wonder if this like nine or ten minutes of madness from Aston Villa will end up costing them that top four berth mm. because you know that's two points dropped. If you if you want to get up to the level they want to be at and you want to compete at the very very top of the Premier League, you got to win these games. Yeah. And they're in a position of absolute box seat to win it. Minute ten minutes of madness, they found themselves behind. Now that they they, they they obviously fought back into it. Watkins scored again late on, but. It's it's a really interesting game, this, because Brentford are capable, as you've touched on. They, they are capable of doing it. I just don't know if people think they're capable enough at this season of doing it for a whole game. Um, but whenever I see them play, there's always a lot, to, a lot usually there's a lot to credit them. Yeah. They just can't put a whole performance together. And then... They've only won twice in the league this year. Yeah, no, which is which is wild. And, and I was saying a few weeks ago, I mean, the position they're in in the Premier League is kind of unprecedented for them since they've since they've come up again. Mm. They they very rarely drop. I, I don't even think in the first two seasons of them being in the league, they actually dropped down to this level at any point. You know, they were always good enough to to stay right out of it. it what looks like will happen this season is that despite Burnley and Sheffield United's, you know, attempts, they're both going to be relegated and it's going to be one from three or four. And Brentford just need to hope that it's not not them, yeah. right? So I'm sure they'll just about be okay. But if I was an Aston Villa fan, I'd be very, very disappointed because they put themselves in such a great position. And to see Nottingham Forest, uh, sorry, Spurs go and do what they did against Nottingham Forest, yeah. it just makes it very, very tough for them now. Well, what Spurs are now above them with a game in hand, which throws all the momentum their way as well, which is the last thing Villa needed. But the thing is, Spurs are kind of in an interesting position, though, because they're kingmakers here now. They play Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. In the, and 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 uh, I think one of the, they're playing at Liverpool Anfield and they've got Arsenal Man City at home, so it will be interesting to see if they can compete at that level with, against those teams who are gunning for the title and really hitting their straps. It's not ridiculous to say that Spurs could lose every one of those games, and mm. if they do, it swings back again. One of the bad news for Arsenal is that uh, Man City have Spurs away on the last day. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Top of the league at the moment, by the way. Not that you'd know it from this running order. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, what we can... Jim conspiracies. Sick yeah, of it. we never talk about Arsenal. It's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> no, indeed. Well, yeah. we mentioned John Cross, Jim. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly. and, and, he, and he loves that. That counts as a mention. That definitely counts as a mention. Yeah. Well, as as I said, fear not, because uh, both Liverpool and Manchester City have to go to Craven Cottage. But what did you think of um, um, 
Ollie Watkins' comments. I well, I'm interested. I, I, I did as well. He said that Villa lacked a big team mentality to kill off crucial games. Was that a come and get back in the Maida? That'd have been a come and get me plea. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm. I yeah. think it, it's it's honest, isn't it? And I, I don't think there's, there's any harm to come from that because he's absolutely right. Villa, Villa have got six games left to go. They need to be galvanised, right? They need to just pull together and get as much out of that as they can. And I think he's right. And it is clearly something they have to think about. They're they're better than this performance based on what we've seen from them. They're a bit unlucky with the first goal for for Brentford. Mm. Jorgensen off his standing leg. It's, yeah. not, it's very rare that you see a, a player go, yeah, cool, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, but it was, that was enjoyable. But I, I think I th- it could go one of two ways, can't it? That, it could sow disharmony in some teams. But I don't think there's any suggestion this will happen with Villa. Mm. I just thought they were, I just think that, you say that, Jim, but as I said at the start of this, I, I, I think they were, it was just that 10 minutes of, of Madness. momentum that they lost. Never lost, never learned their lesson. Don't let Sergio Reggion cross the ball. Mm. He, he looked, he he looked fantastic out there. You can't be giving away three goals in that nine minutes though, can you? Well, the, but the funny thing is, is that they, they then equalise and then they've got 10 minutes plus injury time, which is what, 25 minutes these days, <laughs> to, to get a winner and they, they couldn't quite do it. So they showed a bit of character, not losing the game, you could argue, but... It was a shame for the other sides uh, down there as well who are battling relegation because they would have rather Brentford have lost the game, of course, Mm. because they have to think of themselves. Uh, And we go to Luton Town 2, Bournemouth 1. An unbelievable win for the town, Jim Campbell. The scenes of celebration uh, when they won their first game in 11 were glorious. Yeah. Old Robbie Edwards loved it, didn't he? Yeah, and Colton Morris as well, like practically in tears on the pitch with just the, the pure sort of adrenaline hit of the emotion of it. It was a really, really beautiful thing to see. Yeah, that was... And they've, they've toiled and toiled and they've de- they've deserved points they haven't managed to pick up before this. So it was great to see them turn it around. You know, when, when Bournemouth go 1-0 up, on, on 52 minutes you think oh is it going to be same old same old again but they've they've really dug in there I'm delighted for them mm. no absolutely and it, 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 it's such a lift at this stage of the season of course um, because it, it, we're in the business end we just are are we in the business end I reckon the business end is five games Do you think? to go we discussed this recently didn't we I didn't, I think certainly, people, it's, it's certainly on the horizon but people but, are talking about run-ins now more than they've ever done this and, season and it feel, given there's three teams at the top of the Premier League all going for it I feel like as soon as people start picking up on that I felt like we were kind of just transported into the business end mm. early. You, uh, so it's that good a season. Also, everything well. happens. Right I know early. everything happens. Everything that happens is important now. Yeah, but True. also, Jim, most of the teams down there, apart from Everton and Sheffield United, do have six games left. I know you haven't looked at the bottom of the table. You're just dreary. I forget it's there. You're just sort yeah. of starry-eyed looking at the top. <laughs> but uh, but 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 Luton, Forest, uh, Brentford, and Burnley only have six games left. And Luton, with that victory move themselves on the same level on points with Forest, just goal difference. And their goal difference is, they're minus four uh, below Forest. The Forest of, of, of you know, their, their goal difference is minus 60, Luton's is minus 20. Little, those kind of little margins. So I don't know, I think this gives Luton such a boost. Yeah. As, as you could see, of course it does. I mean, Ahead of going to the Etihad next. So. Yeah, well there, well, there is that, which is, which is <laughs> disappointing. But that's why it's such a crucial victory. Mm. But I think people have taken to Luton for a number of reasons, but one of them would be that they always score. Mm. They, I mean, the game against um, Arsenal before this one was the first game they haven't scored in absolutely yeah, ages since, since November. I think. Yeah, it's crazy in the league. I think yeah, and then and then there's also an element of them. If you look at the games before that, it's the first Premier League game they've won since the end of January. But there's been a lot to credit them in that time, and it feels like they've toiled and 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 worked really hard, and maybe not quite got the rubber degree, and not really got an awful lot to show for it. Of course, there's been a couple of draws in there um, against Crystal Palace and against Forest. But this game is like the game against Villa, which is a crazy game at home. Mm-hmm. They end up losing that. They took May United very close as well mm-hmm. at home. You know, it could be different. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's fine margins here. If if that had gone, I, those two games had gone the other way. Really, Luton are out of it. I mean, they're, they're yeah. above Crystal Palace and they're they're home and home and hose really. So. It's it's good for them as a neutral looking at it for them to, to to actually come off away from a game and go God we we fought tooth and nail there we actually got a win totally and that yeah. could be huge but the problem is you know the 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 spectre at the feast if you like is the fact that they could go to the Etihad next and get absolutely smashed yeah but I, I, again I don't think they would have seriously had that yeah. down for a victory this game against Bournemouth they thought they would have must have thought to themselves we've, we've got to do it and also with Burnley losing because Burnley have shown a little bit of something recently of course. Luton now are six points above them, both still in the relegation zone, of course. But they don't want to, you know, I know it sounds ridiculous, Luton don't want to be looking over their shoulder, even though they're still in a relegation place. You want to be kind of pushing on and trying to reel in everybody else. I mean, they're only five points behind Palace. Now, I don't think Palace will go down, but they'll certainly be thinking, oh, bloody hell, we could do without 
with this kind of running, you know. Mm. So it'd be fascinating to see. And and the aforementioned Morris, you know, nine goals in his first season in the, in the top flight is a, is a very good return, you have to say. You know, he's really taken to it. Um, so to have someone who's, who's scoring goals is, is a huge plus. And Everton know that as well, with Dominic Calvert-Lewin back in the side, even yeah. though it was a very fortuitous goal in one sense. The fact is, you got someone poaching. Now, Luke, you said James Trafford, um, you, you know, you wouldn't shed yeah. a tear for him when he was taken out the side and Murich should go in there. I don't think that's quite that harsh. Do they, do they have to switch it up again now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's inevitable it's all going to happen to, to Murich after I said that. But, I mean, you know, I mean, we saw a lot of those types of goals this weekend. Mm. You know, it's why it's important. I think I said this last time I was on the show. Um, you got if you're a forward, you got to do your doggies. Do your doggies because the goalkeepers like to play now. Exactly. They like to play, and there's always opportunities. Exactly. So um, I don't think I, I still. In think, the words of Stan Collymore, you got to do your doggies. Here's, <laughs> here's it, he said something like that. Um, <laughs> ask answer me this, and I'll throw the question back at you. If James Trafford's that good, yeah. Why is Southgate up north of the border watching the Old Firm derby this weekend? Because he's seen a lot of James Trafford. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> what an old firm derby it, it was. crazy. So let's Incredible. go to Scotland. Come on. A yeah. three-all draw, of course, at Ibrox. They, oh, my They've goodness. done you a solid here, Chelsea fans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this game was unbelievable. Again, we just... Chaos is what, what we need in football more. This is it. This was sensational stuff. Celtic... I mean, they they roar into a two goal lead. There was not. Well, I mean, well, they don't roar, do they? Because there are no away fans. Yeah, which that's is it's true. it's a really strange thing to witness that. Mm, I know what you mean. Reminder: it's a bit it was a bit COVID esque. It was, <clears> yeah. <throat> Until Rangers scored. Yeah, then, and then or a decision went against them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, the first goal, um, Tavernier makes a bad error, doesn't he? And it, yeah. and it goes in. And the second, well, the thing is, does he make a bad error? Is it not ricochet off him? It's that he's, he's he's there or thereabouts. He should be aware of the forward, I think, and. He but he's, he's doing what he should be doing. Well, I mean, the only other option he's got is to... I mean, he can't really go back to the keeper at that point. What are you expecting? Some kind of Cruyff turn on the edge of the area. He's got to try and get rid of it. it was, I, it. I, I would prefer it to be... Yeah. <laughs> I would prefer it to be described as good forward play, actually. All right. Again, more example of doing your doggies, pressing, Do getting right in there. Doggies. You never know what's going to happen. Do the doggies. Mm. Um, yeah. And His then, penalty was sensational. Oh, mm, lovely penalty. Right in the top bins. Did yeah. you think to yourself... Because he's isn't he now that he's he became the top... Scoring defender in British history, I think. Yeah, that's exactly I think so. what I was it's, struggling to it's say. It's a yeah. lot of goals. Yeah, it's very impressive. W- would Southgate think uh, if we do go to penalties, it might be an idea to bring you and Ivan Tony on for the last minute of extra time? I don't think he's thinking that. <laughs> okay, well, would, why was he up there? I would like to. Uh, I would like to cast aspersions, but I don't think he's thinking that. Do you I mean, think? Do you think? Like, imagine because Joe Hart's retiring from football at the end of the season. Little swan song at the Euro <laughs> third point. <laughs> Or was it Jackie Butler that he was looking at? Yeah, I think it's probably more likely he's looking at Butler. Probably. Yeah. yeah. But Earlier on in the week, uh, yeah. or sort of last week rather, you, you started to talk about England and Luke just Paolo maldini you there. Yeah. Just wouldn't have it. Shut it you off. Out. Shepherd yeah, of the yeah, out of play. in his prime. But yeah. you can never keep it down for that long, can We're, you? Speaking and of, sometimes you just have to know when to accept it. Speaking of, Jim, speaking of the business end, right? Uh-huh. What normally <laughs> happens in a year where there's a summer tournament is around the end of April, Marcus just tries to shoehorn everything into it. It's very early this year. Yeah. Summer's come early this year. Luke, you and I have no skin in the Premier League title game or even the Premier League relegation We're game. talking about the old firm here. Yeah? We're talking about the old firm and uh, yeah, fuck, we are. It's a great title. Can't even remember Scotland. what he's talking about. <laughs> is, it great? Like, is Jack Butland going to go or not? <laughs> I don't know, Marcus. <laughs> but Todd Cantwell. There is another option. Another option. Another a lot of options. Tavern it, get them all in. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good title race in Scotland as well. We can't forget that. Very good title race Between in Scotland. Perhaps, perhaps two teams you wouldn't expect. We have to mention Matondo's equal art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a beauty. Yeah. Well, I think Hearts are the real winner because Two points closer to the to the old firm. Absolutely, it's two In points third. dropped by both those teams. Absolutely, uh, Matondo scored another goal. I almost like De Bruyne, Maynou, Matondo. There's a lot of those types of goals scored yeah, this weekend. There is mm. more to it. More, more, mm. more power to their elbows. Yeah, I mean, it was just mad though. And then Celtic equalised. So when it was two all, when it was equalised, and there was VAR controversy, blah, blah, blah. the game had everything apart from a red card. There was more. There was more VAR in that game than I think I've ever seen before. Yeah, the, the referee was do. He was exercising his arms doing the VAR sign over and over and over again. Yeah, I've just been reminded that Butland was awarded Player of the Match, by the way. Oh, good. Okay. So. Great. Gets the nod over Joe Hart in third choice. That's what it's on. Do you reckon that Southgate went down to the keepers before and said, Which one, whichever one of you gets player of the match, lads, uh, is in my squad? He held up the number 23 shirt and went, Lads, this is up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> and they went, What is that? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> ben Foster was there with him going, Lads, seriously, you might yeah. get a run out in the third game. If is that Rob a... Green's finger? <laughs> 
a coat hook <laughs> just hanging there. <laughs> hanging there, <laughs> there the 23 go. shirt off it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Right, let's go to Spain. I, I, no, let's not go to no, Spain. No, we're going to go to Spain. Because I want England's third choice goalkeeper at the summer this year to just to be Rob Green's finger. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just sitting on the bench, bent over, uh-huh. with a tiny little 23 shirt over yeah. the top of it. It's the name of your favourite ale, isn't it? Rob <laughs> Green's finger. <laughs> uh, right, let's go to Spain, where none of us could watch it legally. No. The Copa del Rey final. Mm. And I and I so I didn't watch it. No. Um Athletic Bill Bow ended a forty year trophy drought on Saturday night. They won the Copa del Rey final. Four to one pens after one all draw against Real Mallorca. The penalty competition finished at ten to one in the morning in Seville. Great. It's, it's so hot there, like yeah. you've just got to play as late I'm, as possible. I'm interested about how you are very, very strict on people saying sporting Lisbon, but you're not strict on Athletic Bilbao, which really should be called Athletic Club de Bilbao. Is that right? Yeah, their, their name is Athletic Club. No, I'm only strict on sporting Lisbon because Brassel's normally here when they get a mention, and I just see him getting angry. Yeah. So and we, and we, club we de... can't have that. Can no, we? no, no, certainly not. It's not, he's, he's not worth it. For he, us. he gets so angry yeah, sometimes. People wouldn't believe it. The, the angriest <laughs> I've ever seen Brassel is when someone threw it on his. Accidentally trod on his box fresh pair of Nike Air Maxes. Is that right? He's a big trainer head, big sneaker head, isn't he, Brussels? Sneaker head, yeah, blimey. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, Atletico Bilbao won. <laughs> um, or Bilbao, we'll just call them, shall yeah. we? Into Bilbao. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Atletico, Atletico Bilbao Baggins scored. <laughs> they so, did that's, it. That's a Lord of the Fring, Rings uh, thing, Marcus. I'll tell you later. I've only seen the first two. Yeah, didn't need to do the third. That's no just point. so obvious. More of the same, isn't it? They're with the goodies will win. <laughs> the goodies? <laughs> <laughs> or who are the goodies, Jim? We don't know. Anyway, tell us what happened. They won, um, and and that's about that. Uh, no, they they it was it was a penalty shootout that they was won. What? Penalty competition, Thank you. according to Barry Davis. Uh, and it was the scenes of celebration, uh, not just in Seville from the... the um, I don't know what to call them now. <laughs> the boys in red and white. Uh, not just from them and their fans, but uh, in uh, the, their stadium back in um, Bilbao. Um, they, they, it was packed full of, yeah. of their fans because it's such an important game. Of but course. yeah, they, they had huge screens um, erected all over the pitch yeah. um, so fans in the stadium could watch it. I mean, although, we've seen this, but I think but Roma the, did this in their, one of their finals on, with Mourinho. The, the angle I saw it from, or certainly the angle it was being shot from, it would still have been quite difficult to actually see the screen and what was going on. But it's, it's yeah. a huge effort from them and, and the footage from the game possibly because it looks because it took place so late at night and there's, there's some sort of sense of that I don't know it looks really otherworldly doesn't it Maybe possibly because it's in an athletic stadium as well so yeah. there's a massive gap between the fans and the and, uh-huh. the, and the pitch and the, the, the tiers are really really high there's just so much colour in the ground it, it really was an incredible spectacle it's well worth digging out the highlights and watching watching the extended highlights on that it's also well worth ahead. yes it's all uh, well um it's also worth your time seeing a video of the Real Mallorca coach, uh, Javier Aguirre, who, um, when announcing the penalty takers before the shootout, he is... It's it's a carnival atmosphere. He's yeah. basically he's basically announcing the players who are going to take the penalties for the team in a way that's celebrating them being picked or celebrating them scoring a goal or something. He's obviously trying to imbibe some kind of positive energy and making it look like it's oh, Aguirre's definitely a pri- privilege yeah. to take it rather yeah. than something to be nervous But they're about. celebrating. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when, the fu- when, the, when the full-time whistle goes, I think you see one of the Real Mallorca players almost like punched it. Like, you know, like boxers do at the end of a boxing match when it goes to points mm. and they celebrate as if, oh, well, I've, I've got this. Yeah. Which is, you know, or like a cricket. It's a psychological thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, That was almost like, oh, we've got to penalties because I think they won the semi-final penalties and I think he did this then. But he's going, right, okay, and you're going to take the one. Yeah. And they're, all, they're all celebrating. You get a car. <laughs> you get a car. <laughs> yeah. You get a silver medal, you know. So <laughs> obviously if they go on and win it, it that would... In a way, I'm glad they didn't win it. Well, I'm glad because I'm, you know, for the history. Imagine Gareth Southgate trying that. This is what I mean. Sorry Jim. to be you here. Southgate's never doing that. Don't worry. But we would see that. Southgate approach. wouldn't be celebrating like that if they won it. <laughs> oh it's come not, on! It's not his character. He, it's not his character. He, he lets loose sometimes. I'm a supporter of his. Not that loose. I'm oh, mem- remember the penalty shootout out against Colombia in Russia? That moment where he let his guard it down. It looked really awkward. And he's like, yeah, it looked no, really awkward. Passionate. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the few people, I mean, our listenership... People think I bring in England, I defend them. Twenty <laughs> Only about 22% of our listeners, according to X, which you can find on Twitter.com, mm. think that Southgate's going to do a good job this summer. That's not what we're talking about. I'm one of them. I'm just saying well, I'm a defender of his generally. Now about, is it? Can I, can I, can you I were rest- defending him a minute ago, now you're not even bothering. <laughs> back to the copper Can I wrestle right? it back? I would like to spare a thought for Ika Munayin as well. Yes. Because he's now 31. He was, this, he was this wonder kid. He's a captain of athletic uh, club... Uh-huh. De Bilbao. Yes. He scored his penalty in the shootout. 
he had a huge amount of pressure on him as a young man. I remember well people talking about him being the next big thing and the way he liked to play. People were talking about Messi and all the rest of it. Is he the new this? Is he the new that? Yeah, yeah. He was brought off the bench to, to take a penalty. Oh, actually, no, I think he was brought on four extra time. And uh, he able to, he's able to win a, 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 um, a trophy for the first time in his career. And of course, he's given his background and, and his attitude towards the game. He has spent his entire career athletic club and it's great for him to better win a trophy with the club that he clearly loves so I just thought that was a nice moment well, well indeed and he was he was he's been runner up in the Copa del Rey what three times something like that yeah and the Europa League of course um, so finally he wins a trophy after being in so many finals and finally athletic as I'm now going to call them um, get to get the barge out. I get to use the barge. Now, this is interesting. So instead of an open-top bus parade, they have a river barge called La Gabara. And they use this in celebrating their 1982-83 league title win. They go down the river. Apparently, a million people or so were were out that day, they reckon, to celebrate them winning the league title. Um, They won the league title again a year later. Right, well, get the barge out. And, uh, and And so they did. But it's been 40 years. Goodness, I mean, um, one of their players, uh, who was it, Unai Simon, said it's been 40 years. Let's see if it still floats. Mm. Um, And uh, Nico Williams said there were 10 commandments in the dressing room ahead of the final. One was not mentioning the barge. They don't mention the barge. Don't mention the barge. So it's been dormant for a while, but now I love the idea of an open top barge. Super. I I think people should. Soon we'll be able to see it. Imagine that. Imagine that if if Arsenal win the title down the Thames and everyone's like, piss, you know, on the Thames. Well, the Fulham should do that. Because it's right on the Thames. Yeah, yeah. I, maybe they will. Yeah. I really want You may never know. <laughs> <laughs> Portsmouth could do a sailboat, couldn't they? Could yeah. do, around right, the island. Right by the south coast. You can't really sail around the Portsea Island itself, but you could do something around the Solent. Make it happen. Yeah, you could do that. Um, it, I mean, it, it, all I'm saying is it's, it's quite passe to do a bus. Maybe, yeah, we saw what happened when Sergio Ramos dropped a trophy once mm, on the bus. Well, they've learned the lesson. If you go drop a trophy in the in the canal or the river, whatever it is, yeah. someone could just dive in and get it again. Ramos easy, has got easy. them spare, though, isn't it? It's different. Oh, he's, no one's he's, dropping he's that. Not yeah. it. He's not missed it. It's lovely to see the Williams brothers uh, yeah. celebrating yeah. that. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's the nature of that club. They, 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 they play in a certain way. They use players of a certain background. And for them to still win a trophy in the modern football where there's so many players coming in from all over the place yeah. is an incredible thing. And it some really would is. say, well, actually, this is the exception that proves the rule because I haven't won anything for 40 mm. years. But it's nice that there's a protected way of doing it. And it's very old fashioned. But every so often, it's nice to see something like that happen. Was that as romantic as Peterborough winning the EFL trophy final at Wembley, beating Wickham 2 1 on Barry Fry's 79th birthday? That is love. Was Barry there? I just assume so. Soul! <laughs> Soul to the fat bastard in the blue blazer! <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you were there. Um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Harrison Burrow's second goal was an oh absolute peach. It was an absolute cross. <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> but then, for those who didn't see this game, very, very briefly, the. It was 2-1 to Peterborough in the end at Wembley. Mm. Um, testament actually to modern football. that. So I always felt like, and don't forget, I supported a team who've been around this level of football for, for a fairly long time now. So this is not me criticising anyone. But in the past, when teams have gone to Wembley to play a big trophy, to play in the, to win a, a trophy, it's always looked a bit odd because they don't, they're not used to playing football in a certain way. Yeah. It's not what you're used to seeing at a showpiece event at Wembley. But mm. now every team seems to play fairly good football right so it was a testament to them both these teams that the, the game was decent but there weren't any goals until the last sort of five or six minutes of the game and all three of them came um, from the 85th minute Harrison Bro scored to put Peterborough one up then in the last minute Wickham equalised and went crazy as you'd expect and then Harrison Burrows, as Jim perhaps unfairly alluded to, given that the guys won a trophy for his club by doing it, scores from absolutely miles out yeah. and it <laughs> nestles in the top corner um, literally a minute later. I don't think um, he'll mind how it's gone in. I doubt he's thought about it for a single second. Um, because it's been um, it's been uh, it's been a trophy, and he's a captain as well, so he got to lift the trophy. So yeah, all very, very good, interesting stuff. But it's a trophy that Portsmouth have won fairly fairly recently, so you know what it feels like. Special place in my heart. You know what it feels like. Mm. Ah, oh, what a way to end, uh, to end the show, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAST Creator Network. Do join us on Wednesday for another barn-burning Football Ramble. Uh, do follow us on X in the meantime, or um, Athletic X, as it's now called, <laughs> uh, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, at Football Ramble, and follow us on Spotify. Thank you, Luke Moore. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim Campbell. Thank you, thank you Barry Fry. We'll see you soon. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.